that leads us into chapter 12, traders from distant lands. They're, they find a hotel basically to stay in for the night because it is dark out. Everybody's exhausted. It was a long trek down. And Volk is promptly woken up with some kind of movement within his room. And it turns out to be Eviana sneaking into his room using her shadow stuffing abilities, catching him while he's only wearing his trousers and only getting four hours of sleep. But yet she's the one that's upset because he has retribution drawn. I really don't know what she expected. Right? Like, <laughs> you just snuck into his room. <laughs> oh, I'm used to intruders in the middle of the night. You're fine. <laughs> this happens all the time. I feel like it'd be worse if he didn't react like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would be concerned. <laughs> So Luther is basically being his clothes hanger because Luther is just like grabbing everything out of the shadows and giving him his clothes, you know, his shirt, his belt, his boots. And Evian is kind of explaining why she's in there. And she's just basically saying that she has bad dreams about Livia and that Volk is pretty much the only person that could relate or understand what she's talking about. Volk was kind of irritated with this because, again, he just kind of randomly got woken up and by her shadow stepping into his room. He's like, look, I swear to God, it better be everything's on fire. Uh, Fane is trying to put out said fires. Adele just is running around with his chicken, you know, like a chicken with his head cut off because of the fires. Like it, everything has to be hitting the fan. OK, for you to just shadow step back into my room next time have your people get a hold of my people and then they'll get a hold of me. And it works because their people don't sleep. <laughs> exactly. 24 <laughs> seven concierge service. <laughs> like, shoot. Hey, could you grab, grab me this? I, I would be so horrible with that. <laughs> like if it's not below you, would you mind grabbing me a cup of coffee? Maybe pick up the dry cleaning and run to the grocery store for me. <laughs> We've got a list of chores. <laughs> exactly. He could be two places at once. He really could be. Right? Like, shoot. We digress. <laughs> <laughs> so Volk has found out that Addy and Zaxis have already been out in the market looking for star shards. And Zaxxus stood out like a sore thumb to everybody because everybody else in town has like brown or black hair to blonde and redheads are very uncommon. So again, no wonder Zelfry has a preference. He wants them exotics. You know, you got, you got Linus, you got, and then you got the people from the Island of Ruma. He's, he likes luxury goods, so. you know? <laughs> They're not common, so he, they're, they're, like I said, the exotic, exquisite thing. So as they're walking around, Eviana is getting stared at, and Volk kind of realizes that the second ascension is still pretty much on the manhunt for her because Rashawn, Rashawn has <laughs> Rashawn is a bad man, a very bad man. <laughs> So he basically is, I'm going to kill her. She's dead to me. She needs to be killed. So she does need to be careful while she's outside of the guild. And Volk is looking around, trying to find a stall that has star shards. He did find a stall that had star shards sitting out in the open for trade. And the guy that he walks up to gives the traditional uh, welcome, basically, as what people in Unora would have given. And Volk reciprocated that and had talked about it. I imagine to this guy from New Nora that's in Port Acro, this guy is probably blown away that Volk knows how to do this you know, hand sign and like that greeting. They get to talking about the sandstorm that was so crazy that actually got over the city wall. And the guy's like, oh my God, I was there. And Volk's like, oh, I uh, was there too. <laughs> I definitely didn't cause that or have any part in that whatsoever. <laughs> the guy from New Nora, he actually mentions that people aren't staring at his, I can't remember if he said his woman or whoever, his companion, I think is the word that they used. 
his companion, they're staring at Volk because he's got a glowing true form nightmare mark on his forehead. Like, of course they're staring at him. So they offer to make a trade. The guy wants 10 gold crowns or 11 gold leaves for those island bumpkins. <laughs> and Volk's like, I don't got any money. So he's, well, you got a nightmare. So could we get, so, can I get something from your nightmare? And this is where we find out that the capes from nightmares are pretty much all of like where all their magic is or their strongest piece of magic on them. And like a beast, Luther comes up and just pulls out a chunk of him <laughs> from his chest. <laughs> it just feels so graphic, like just rip out a piece and just like molds back over his body or his empty space, I guess. <laughs> Is he hollow? Like, is he truly hollow inside, other than just the helm? These are the real questions, right? Like, we talked about Nicolin getting inside the helmet at one point. Like, could he just fall straight through to the leg? Like, how does this all work? <laughs> so, again, Volk does decide to contribute something of his to get Star Shards to help get this ship up and moving again. So with that ends chapter 15 with the bestiary being so close to being released and everything like that. We did promise Shamey that we would not disclose anything else until we are told that we can. So I believe after this episode, we will be able to start continuing on the bestiary. I'm going to wait for her official ominous dominus to let us begin that. So we're just waiting for Shamey to give us the clear just because previously we did have some recorded for the updated beast year delay in releasing the beast year. We, we had to cut it out. So to avoid anything else from happening and having to cut things out, we were just going to wait for her official, everything's been shipped and most of her Kickstarter people have gotten it. So that way they can have a chance to read it first. Every time you mention Shami, I just want to be like, I'm going to pick that name up real quick. <laughs> I swear I'm not like No, I, I know you're not I'm, doing it. It just feels like friend of the pod. I'm gonna pick that name up. I promise it's more of a sh it's it's more me like straight fanboying than it is anything else. I know <laughs> than, than trying to so be funny. like, oh look at me. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> Did I mention that oh no. <laughs> but alright, thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you guys next week. Eric Scott and I want to thank everyone for listening today. We post a new episode every Wednesday morning at 11 Eastern, 10 Central, and 8 Pacific Standard Time. We are on all podcasting platforms and are also on YouTube as well for video. After the additional episode airs, we post chapter-by-chapter -chapter videos every day in a smaller, easier-to-digest format. We do want to give a special shout-out to the final member of our team, Dan Mackison, one of the admins for the Frith Chronicles Wiki, link listed below and doing his best to keep everything running smoothly behind the scenes. If you want to reach out to us, you can email us at frithguildpod at gmail.com or on Facebook or any other social media by searching for Frith Guild Podcast. Just to remind everybody, we have links to everything in the description below on both the podcast and YouTube. Before you go to, go to chapter 14, so in the notes, there's a typo. It's supposed to be a glutton for pain, but he's a gluten for pain, which I think is just amazing because <laughs> he's a little piece of I'm bread. I'm totally going to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I'm like, oh, Zax is his little bread, slice of bread. <laughs> uh, he's got a stack pouch, okay? He does. He's got, he does carry around a snack pouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right.